I think the doctrine of hell is one of the most misunderstood and most objectionable doctrines in the Catholic faith. And so I thought we should talk about that here, especially as I rebrand my website, workingtobeathell.org. That's a shameless plug, I know. I want to talk about this because I think a lot of people hold the same objection to the doctrine of hell, which basically goes like this. How is it possible that you can believe in an all-loving God and then believe that that all-loving God is going to send a soul to a place of torment for all eternity? Indeed, I think that's a powerful objection. However, I think at the heart of this objection is a complete misunderstanding of God that ultimately leads to a misunderstanding of hell and punishment. When we talk about God, we do say that God is all-loving. And like you, I would reject the notion that an all-loving God wants to send people to hell arbitrarily or to be tormented arbitrarily simply because they didn't follow a couple of legalistic rules that he set forth. See, that's all a misunderstanding of who God is. And so I do reject that notion the same way that an atheist might reject that notion. But when we talk about God, we talk about God being love. Love is willing the good of another. Now, an interesting thing about God is not only is he love, but he is goodness itself. So what God wants for us, being a loving God, is for us to be united with him. But in order for that to happen, we have to enter into that relationship with God. God wants us to conform to that which is good. And this is why God teaches us his laws and his statutes. Many people will take laws and say these are ways of controlling or manipulating people. But see, that's a distinction that the Christian God has that's different from all of the pagan gods. For the pagan gods, it's true that they'll put forth commands and they manipulate humanity. But the Christian God is completely different. He's not a God who wants to manipulate humanity for his own benefit, but rather he's a God who wants to enter into a relationship with human beings out of love because it's what's good for them is to be united to him who is good. And so God teaches us, what is it like to be God? What does it mean to be good? What does it mean to enter into a relationship with the good? And here God gives us his commands. You know, when you look at the Old Testament, in the Psalms in particular, you'll hear the psalmist rejoicing that the Lord has given them his commands, that he has taught them his statutes, his ways. And he hasn't done this for other nations, they say. And so they feel blessed to have this law. Nowadays, we tend to get the law and we say, oh my goodness, it's all these burdensome things that I have to do. I have to go to church. I can't eat meat on Fridays during Lent. All these types of burdensome things. But I think it's a fundamental misconception of what the law is meant to be. The law is meant to be a guide to bring us into relationship with the truth. You see, when we understand what God is like, we can say, if I want to be like God, if I want to share God's life, then I need to conform myself to God. That's how I become like God. That's how I participate in what is good. Now, when we choose not to do that, that's what hell is, ultimately. You know, C.S. Lewis has a great description of hell. He says the doors of hell, or the gates to hell, are locked from the inside, not from the outside. So we shouldn't think of it so much as a place where God arbitrarily punishes us. That's not the, the right notion. It's one notion, certainly. But I think the better notion for our understanding is to say, we've got a God who has taught us what it means to be loving. And if we follow those teachings, we're going to be united with love. We're going to be entering into a relationship with goodness itself and therefore be united to God who is love. If we don't do that, what happens is we separate ourselves from that which is good and we cut ourselves off from the source of love. Well, if you cut yourself off from love, what is that but torment? But see, the thing is, it's not something that's inflicted by God arbitrarily. It's not something where God made up some rules that benefit himself, and if we don't adhere to those rules, then all of a sudden we're finding ourselves being punished. Rather, what it is, is God has taught us, this is what it means to be in union with me. You can choose to do this and share the joy of being in a union, a relationship with me, or you can refuse to do it in which case you're also going to feel the consequences of what it means to be separated from me who is good. Because what you're choosing is to be separated from that which is good for you. In other words, you're going to be united to what is bad for you. Let me give you a few other 
kind of flippant analogies, but they might help to understand this concept. Think of our dietary habits. Certainly most of us know what is good for us and what is not good for us. And yet we're free to choose to eat Oreo cookies all day long if we choose to do so. Yet doing so is not going to unite us to what is good for ourselves. And so we're going to feel the natural consequences of being malnourished, of eating junk food all the time. We'll be overweight, we'll have heart problems, probably diabetes, all kinds of other consequences that we face. But again, this isn't a punishment inflicted by Nabisco upon us for choosing to eat Oreos, nor is it a punishment you know, set upon us by Whole Foods uh, for choosing an unhealthy food rather than something that's healthy. Rather, what it is, it's the natural consequence of choosing that which is not good for us, a dietary style that's not good for us. Now expand this to the entirety of our being. What hell is, is the consequence of choosing that which isn't good. That's what's not good for you. And that's what happens when we choose hell. Now you could say, again, but how could an all-loving God allow anybody to suffer those consequences? Because an all-loving God wants to enter into a loving relationship. But for a relationship to be based on love, two people have to freely enter into it. In other words, it's not a loving relationship if I force you to like me, if I manipulate you in any way. It's not love. It's based on something else. And so the Lord says, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a relationship that's based on love. And so what he does is he teaches us, this is what's good for you. This is how you enter into a relationship with me. And so I ask you to choose what is good. But ultimately, I can't force that upon you. Because if I do that, it's no longer a loving relationship. It's either a forced or a manipulative relationship. So ultimately, when we talk about hell, the doctrine of hell comes down to understanding that we are truly free. We're true to are truly free to enter into a relationship with God, to embrace him the way he wishes to embrace us. Or we're free, on the other hand, to reject God. You know, I think there's two great examples of how this works. We can look at the examples of the devil, Satan, and Mary, the mother of God, both of whom God loves deeply. And yes, God does love the devil. Otherwise, the devil wouldn't still be in existence. The difference is that while God loves both of them deeply, Mary is thrilled by this fact and wants to enter into this relationship with God. And so she follows him and embraces his ways. The devil, on the other hand, can't stand it. And so he runs away from God and separates himself from God at every opportunity. Now, think about it this way. For somebody who wants to enter into a loving relationship, knowing that their beloved loves them in return, brings great amount of joy. And that's what Mary experiences. For someone who wants nothing to do with someone else, to find out that that person loves you and is continually responding to you with love is experienced as torture. You say, I don't want anything to do with this person, and this person throwing themselves at me saying, I still love you. That's torture, and that's what the devil experiences. That's what hell is. You see, when we separate ourselves from what is good, what is good suddenly seems like torture because it doesn't taste like those Oreo cookies. It tastes like broccoli and spinach. But ultimately, it's the broccoli and spinach that we might need to acquire the taste for because that's what's going to bring about a healthy body. That's what's going to bring us to, to wholeness and into that loving relationship with God. And so as I have this ministry called Working to Beat Hell, it's not a ministry about trying to overcome a legalistic God who's trying to manipulate us in order to get us to do things for his own benefit. Rather, it's trying to get us to overcome our own selfishness, our own desire to go after instant gratification when it might not be healthy for us, and instead to say, how do I need to change my life so that I can choose what is really good for me and so that I can enter into this loving relationship with God? And see, when you do that, then all of a sudden you are working to beat hell.